couple of things before we formally get started. Uh, this was originally scheduled for a public hearing on a wetlands permit. Uh, it's been determined by a lot of research by the applicant, by our engineer, by our attorney, by our planner, that no wetlands permit is necessary. Consequently, we canceled that public hearing. So um, that's resolved. They are official wetlands of the Army Corps. However, you're not doing anything in the wetlands per se. So no permit is necessary. And that's why uh, we've canceled that public hearing. OK? Um, the right. The, uh, Susan Boyle is not here tonight. Uh, she let us know about that. Right. We have one. <laughs> and uh, our planner uh, called me last week um, with vacations. They had someone leave the firm. Uh, she asked if it would be all right if no one from the planning end came tonight. I said it was. I can read their report. We did get their report. So that's not really a problem that, that I see that she's not here or uh, her uh, substitute is not here. Um, so with that, uh, the first thing we'll take care of is uh, approval of the minutes from our meeting of July 11th. Uh, does anybody have any questions about the minutes? Any corrections, questions? Okay. Susan? No, I'm good, thank you. Nope. Okay, so I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I'll abstain because I wasn't here. And I think probably, Bill, you want to abstain too. Since you weren't here, do you want to abstain? Or abstain. Or abstain? Yeah. Okay. So you got there. Okay. All right, so the only issue, uh, only item on the agenda then, well, we have to uh, adjourn a public hearing for Tuxedo Farms, which we'll do at the end. So we'll start the uh, Skyview Skylight item. So, uh, Dan, you want to give us an update on what's new since the last appearance? Oh, absolutely, Mr. Chairman. Members, uh, professionals, Deb, um, when we uh, last met, um, we were giving marching orders um, to bring back certain things to you to address issues that were raised by the board and uh, some of the members of the public. Uh, I believe that we have done all that. Um, uh, part of our team went up to meet with uh, uh, members of the Department of Health um, and uh, submitted um, what they wrote back in connection with that. Um, it looks like um, we would be able to comply with that. Um, and well, you know, the technical aspects, obviously, uh, Ken or Elena will um, get into that. Um, you asked us to bring, if we could get it, some materials that we would be using. I think Can I just use this microphone, please? Chris, I think you brought that up. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we do um, have a couple people. Um, so Norman does have some um, of the materials uh, that we'll be using. Um, we tried to bring in an air conditioner, but just couldn't do it. Um, so we're on tonight um, for, correct me if I'm wrong, Kelly. Uh, a continuation of the site plan, um, a uh, first look, um, uh, although we have been talking about it throughout this process with regard to architectural um, and uh, landscaping issues that the, uh, this board uh, also serves uh, as the ARB to address. And we uh, formally applied um, for the conditional uh, use uh, permit to allow for the heavy industrial um, use that would be taking completely inside the facility. 
Um, with regard to landscaping, we have added. Um, with regard to um, parking, um, we've agreed uh, that we will uh, install What's the exact terminology? Port not uh, pavers of that. The ones that the uh, lady showed the the grass paving. Um, so we're going to put grass pavers there rather than completely like, like uh, grass trees and like that. So it so it it's a, yeah. is amazing at absorbing, um, unlike uh, some of these other things uh, uh, throughout the years. Um, Um, you've received stuff from uh, Orange County, um, the GML right. as well, um, for vocal determination. And we will address whatever uh, Orange County uh, Highway Department wants us to do. It's their road. Uh, we have as much say as you do, <laughs> even though it's in your municipality. Uh, so with that, I'd like to turn to you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Ken DiGennaro from Brooker Engineering, a site engineer for the project. Um, so our response to the comments, our new submission includes, um, overall, the, the site layout is largely the same. Um, the, the key differences are we did include a, a section drawing as part of the site plan to demonstrate potential impacts to the neighbor to the east. Um, and I believe that is drawing 11 or 12 in the, in the site plan set. So you can, you can see from that drawing, which I don't have mounted, the vegetation that's planted. Again, this reiterates maintaining the 10-foot buffer along the eastern property line. Um, really no disturbance, keeping the existing vegetation that's, that's there right now in place. Supplementing that with additional landscaping, which we talked about extensively uh, with our landscape architect last time. Um, so, you know, the impact to the neighboring residents, while it's not going to totally screen the building, it's definitely going to soften the appearance of the building from the, from the neighbor. And that's it's definitely- going to I can't hear you. That's definitely going to soften the appearance of the building from the neighbors to the east. Um, and that's shown with the topography on the plan, with the residents um, per county topography, and the plantings in place there. And also you can see, we talked about the distances. Um, we have 142 feet from the property line to the building. Um, <coughs> offset there. This is not easy to see from here. It is part of the drawing set as well. Again, it's drawing number 12. Uh -huh. So engineering-wise, we also, based on coordination with um, Orange County Health Department, we relocated the proposed well. And that meets the criteria of um, the 100-foot radius, but it does not meet the 200-foot radius of ownership. There are waivers. There is a procedure for um, acquiring the permissions to build that well. Um, the early indications are that it's definitely feasible. It's um, going to include some additional construction techniques, well casings, some other items that are going to be necessary. Um, but it's going to have to be done because the site just does, does not have the width of 400 feet to get 200 feet in all directions. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but if you meet those criteria from the Department of Health, um, they would grant the waiver. Correct. But that's the way I read their letter. Yes. And in our meetings, I, nothing can be guaranteed, but it was as close as possible. You know. Um, and again, considering that there was a well approved for this property with a much higher water usage, um, water usage on this property uh, for the future use, 
is significantly less than a regular um, commercial building. Did that well require a waiver? No, um, it should have, but it was not obtained. Um, and that's just, I couldn't get it, we could not get a, a concrete answer as to why that happened. Um, it probably was due to a staffing issue, being shorthanded, and maybe it's just the application got passed. That was the original well you're speaking of? Yes. How long, how long ago was it drilled? Um, I believe when the, when the, um, when the shell was constructed, so probably about 15 years ago. It's, it's not that old. Oh, okay. I thought maybe his grandfather. Okay. So, but yeah, about 2007. Oh, fairly new. Um, yeah, we asked about grandfathering too. We, we tried that and, um, nope. Couldn't Let me interrupt for one second because it totally relates to what you're talking about. Another thing that we did was, uh, we contacted- Can you the talk the microphone? So, just so it's recorded. Thank you. Um, another thing that we did uh, since we last met with you was we contacted the clerk, um, the village clerk of Hilburn, which is where um, the present facility uh, gets its water supply. Um, and we had her check out how many years? Um, it averages 1,000 gallons a month, but not much more than probably my house with my four kids when I was when they were younger. So, about the the recovery of the of the old well, or what? That would have been ideal, but they can't ideal. Do that. One final thing on the old well: is there a requirement that that be closed somehow? Yes. It would be enclosed uh, likely in accordance with DEC closure requirements. They'd have to have a certified well driller come out and close it and submit a copy of that report to the building inspector. So we would have to add that as a condition? Yes, yeah. I found something off of the board and Kelly and so Sean. Is there a way of not tying our hands on that? Um, I don't know your feelings about it, but a thousand gallons, uh, we're already knocking down the building, but to be able to repurpose uh, a well that's already existing without having to create additional land disturbance when the original well carried three times as much water. That doesn't mean anything. My recommendation, if I wish you were client's engineer, and my recommendation to this board, would be to abandon it. That well serves as a pathway down to the aquifer. And if there's any contamination whatsoever, and you don't have to have a business where there could be contamination, but if the business was to be sold in the future or something like that, you could contaminate the wells around the site. We did have a test. Yeah. You can contaminate the well. It's a, it's, a, it's a path right down to the aquifer. Uh, one more thing too, isn't there more than one, didn't you find multiple wells on that property? So shouldn't they all be? Yes. So we're not just talking about one well. We'd have to talk about multiple. It, it's, it's not. It's not a big deal. I've been on site for. Well, actually, it's not a big deal. Where they've, where, uh, where they've decommissioned 30, 40 wells sometimes. I think it happens. It is on the property. We know a lot of wells out here at first time, and uh, maybe it was. That's not what came out of the zoning board meeting. And in one of the zoning board meetings, I believe we said that there was two or three wells that were found. Two wells that so were Kevin, found. Kevin. Kevin. We're not going to regurgitate zoning board issues. No, I'm just tonight. telling you where I got my I, information from. I'm not just telling you to go back. This is where I get my information from. This is information that came from the applicant as we were going through this process. I will, I will I'm let, just going back into my memory, John, and saying this is what I recall and I, this is where I recall. I, under, I understand. This is not a public hearing. I will let you speak, provided we don't regurgitate and relitigate items that have been resolved. That would, No, it was not an item that came up. From the zoning board, it came up during the meeting, and they brought it up about the wells being on the property. The zoning board didn't ask about it. I'll look in my notes, but let's move on from there. Regardless, we would put in a condition that says oh, abandonment well, of wells. Wells be closed. In case there's period. Yes. I think the board is is 
they asked for the engineer's opinion. The engineer said he's recommending that they be closed. I think there's a strong likelihood that the board is going to go along with that recommendation. It's something that's typical in any of the board's applications where there's a well that's not being used. Okay. Can I add something to it? Sure. Um, on the map, it says there's two wells. So the existing wells are found. The other one we could not find. So we're looking for it. Okay. We're looking for hours around. We tried to map it out. We could not find it. So we well, I think during oh, demolition construction, if it's a, if it's there, I would think you would find it. So we found only five wells in the pond because everything is designed order, and for the other one we could not find. It. Okay. But if we find it and it's a requirement, as Sean's pointing out, right. we will comply. Right. The S will be in parentheses. Right, Kelly? Yes. Just in case there's a second one. Okay. Continue. Um, in addition, uh, get, uh, Mike, uh. So in addition to the minor site plan changes and supplemental information that was provided, we did some additional coordination with the DEC, and they did issue a formal letter of no adverse impact to the uh, potential endangered species um, that could be affected by the site. So that's um, something that we were happily able to kind of, was ongoing, we were able to cross that off the list. They did have several recommendations yes. that you will have to follow. Of course. And I think they uh, are going to, uh, a year after they were to uh, uh, first open, I believe, uh, DEC will come down to make sure, according to that letter, um, that everything is in order and was built to the specifications and the training was done, et cetera. Yes, so th that's the summary of the key changes um, and additional information that was prepared for, for the meeting tonight. Yeah, one other thing uh, that we found out uh, today, actually, and I don't think most of the members of the board are aware of this, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, if anything that I say, uh, you do not have updated renderings of the smaller building tonight. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Um, you have some insulation materials, but you don't have the siding material tonight. Um, so it would be my recommendation, and I want to get the input of the rest of the board. I don't see how tonight we can give you ARB approval, because we don't know what the building's going to look like. I understand it's smaller. I understand it's going to be similar. But I think we, we have to see it. Now, that does not preclude us from doing something tonight. And Kelly, if you could. If the board could certainly take action um, on the special permit and the site plan. I would modify the resolution that was provided to remove any references to ARB or the ARB materials. But you could take action on the other two if you'd like to. However, what does it allow them to actually do without ARB approval? Well, they can certainly get a head start on some of the conditions. It's, right. it's pretty lengthy, um, so they could get a head start on that. And site work, too, right? Yeah. Uh, some site work. It depends on what you're planning on doing and what conditions have been completed. I but believe you were made back with the building inspector. Right? The building inspector and Sean. And you could do... Uh, demolition once you receive a demolition permit. <coughs> Correct? Correct. It is somewhat at risk in case we would never approve the ARB part, which you would have to, you understand. I do. Okay. Okay. So, regardless, you would have to come back on September 7th? 5th. September 5th which is the Tuesday after Labor Day. I don't see that there's a problem with a meeting the day after Labor Day. I'm not proposing to uh, move that. Um, so let's put the ARB thing to rest. I just want to get the input from the rest of the board, how they're, what they feel about that. Justin? Um, yeah, I agree. I don't think we can review it if we don't have any drawings or renderings. Okay. Susan? 
Yeah, I'm fine with that. <coughs> Bill? Yeah, I think it makes sense, but my question is, why isn't it here? Because it hasn't been drawn or you haven't made all the decisions yet? We matured a new vote. Mr. Chairman, before you continue with the board, can I just uh, bring up one point? Sure. Understanding that there's a new professional involved, uh, I think they would have to get a submission into you by August 25th, and you did say that is, there is a holiday rolled into there, so I just want to make sure that the applicant can do that. To know what they're doing and having not drawn it out yet. Can you get these in by August 25th? The architecturals, um, the renderings and the building materials? Yes, I believe you can. Um, and to answer your question, we kind of switch gears with the architect. Um, so engage uh, a new firm and have them up to speed, it just wasn't possible. Also, this meeting is the first, okay. so it's the earliest possible meeting. So um, when he draws it and you guys approve it, then we can look at it to approve yes. it. Yes. Yes. It's fair enough. Okay. I'm okay. on board. Yeah, I think it makes perfect yeah, sense. I agree with you. Is that new firm uh, under contract now? You've hired them? Or are you talking to them? Yeah, no, we hired them. You hired them? Yeah. Okay. Here, we're done, they're in Greenwich, and we're reaching out to different companies and different options to see um, which part will be, which part will be um, prefab and which part will be uh, constructed. So we're looking which way is the best way of doing this and which materials are readily available to go ahead. So okay. hopefully by that time you have enough time to come back to the board. Okay. Can I ask who that firm is? Are you, are, are you comfortable telling us who that is? Or? My daughter is working with it. Uh, she's in town with them. So I spoke with them and left on the phone and she's dealing with them directly. So okay. And they should probably uh, 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 learn Sean's name and number in case they have any questions, right? Yeah. Sure. About anything. And uh, Deborah, the building. Okay. All right. So the ARB for tonight is tabled. Um, so do you want to pursue the other items tonight? This special permit and potentially special permit and site plan? Yes. You, Mr. Chairman, yeah. as to whether that can occur. Now, again, uh, if, if the board agrees, I'd like to move things forward. Um, so why don't we start with the uh, consultant's reports. Uh, so you did not receive a written report from me, and that was re really because of where we are in the review process. The applicants addressed a number of our comments, and on the remaining comments, I, I wrote to Kelly beforehand, and she incorporated those into the resolution uh, this evening. I wasn't aware that you'd be tabling the ARB review. Uh, but when the applicant submits those plans, I'll look at those and make sure they coordinate with the site plans. Okay. Um, I'll read the very brief comments from um, uh, Valerie, our planner. Uh, she submitted this on July 28th last week. Um, agency reviews. It is recommended that as a condition of approval, the applicant needs to address any outstanding comments from, a, from both agencies being uh, Orange County Department of Health and Orange County uh, DPW. Uh, threatened or endangered species it is recommended that the applicant must adhere to the conditions set forth in the uh, New York State DEC July 26, 2023 memo, which you alluded to, Ken. And finally, the wet, uh, wetlands. Uh, it is recommended that as a condition of approval, the planning board require all stormwater to be treated within the wetland buffer and any changes to the proposed design require further review from the planning board. Uh, on that one, Sean, you want to comment on that one? To be honest with you, I, I, there's uh, some language that's used in that comment that I don't quite understand. What I think Valerie's saying is anything from that area before it discharges into the wetlands needs to be treated. I don't think she's saying for treatment to be added to the buffer because they've relocated their stormwater to the other side of the site. So I think by relocating it, I think they address it, but I don't think she's asking for additional treatment to be added. Okay. Didn't you ask for some uh, details about that retention system? Yes, I've asked for details about that and also the uh, sanitary sewer system. Um, and have you received those? Yes, they provided that, they provided um, some they actually relocated because the well moved over to the westerly portion of the site. They now moved their whole infiltration system over to the easterly portion of the site. Uh, in your correspondence, you did say some additional information was forthcoming, but I think what's on the plan right now is to the level that it could be approved. 
uh, at least approved conditionally. So when that additional information is available, that I provide that and before you sign the plans, that review would be completed and there's a condition that says that in the, in the resolution. That retention system, it, it, I couldn't quite figure it out from the, uh, the drawing where it's shown. Is that within the buffer zone or, or not? No, this is It's now, outside of the buffer. Yeah, that's right. And do you want to show the board that's the modification what I you made? So there's two separate detention systems. Uh, the first one is located on the east side of the building in the parking area, and the second one is located just north of the building, kind of uh, east of the entrance. So yes, it is outside of the uh, of the wetland buffer, and it's outside of the radius of influence or, um, of the of the well as, as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else, Sean? No. Everything else incorporated in the conditions. If you want during the review of the conditions, I'm happy to address any engineering concerns. Okay. Um, I don't know. Do we want to go through all the conditions, Kelly? Or? I'm um, actually interested in... <laughs> and see me on the fly, take some of mine. Yeah. So that's, that's a yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. There were a lot. There's, just, there's a lot. So yeah. But there's... A, you do have a member of the public who I know is interested in this, and some of them will come out. So if you're following along, um, the numbering is obviously going to have to change. You know that. Um, so the first specific condition is going to come out for right now. That's related to ARB. So the conditions... Right now, will be prior to the signing of the plan, the applicant shall comply with the memorandum of the town engineer dated July 7th, 2023, to the satisfaction of the town engineer. Comply with the memorandum of the town planner dated July 6th, 2023, to the satisfaction of the town planner. Comply with the requirements of the Orange County DPW set forth in its correspondence dated July 6th, 2023. 2023. Comply with the requirements of the New York State DEC set forth in its correspondence. July 26, 2023, comply with the requirements of the Orange County Department of Health. Submit a stormwater pollution prevention plan to the satisfaction of the town engineer. This SWIP shall include specific provisions relative to the mitigation of potential impacts from dust. Revise the plans to correspond with the SWIP approved by the town engineer. This next one, the board does need a little bit of discussion on. Uh, revise the lighting plan to correspond with the town's outdoor lighting standards contained in section 9839 of the town code to the satisfaction of the town engineer. All non-essential lighting shall be turned off not later than one hour after and not sooner than one hour before. Turned on not sooner than one hour before. It probably should be sunrise, sunset, something like that. I think that's the actual language from your code, Kelly Brett, with the modification. Uh, normal business hours, leaving only the necessary lighting for site security and signage, which shall be reduced to the minimum level necessary, but in no event shall exceed one foot candle. Non-essential lighting applies to display, aesthetic, parking, and sign lighting. And then I put in bold italics, the planning board may require that the lights be controlled by automatic timing devices. Didn't know if you wanted that to be or whether or not you wanted to require them to be uh, controlled by automatic. I mean, I don't know if matters matter in which they're controlled as long as they meet that the requirements of our. That's correct. But I, I had made that suggestion because you had received public comment about potential lighting impacts. And it isn't uncommon to, you know, go by a site and somebody inadvertently left the, the lights on. If it's a small site, it's not a big deal. This is a larger site. You have residential properties neighboring this. You have the Palisades neighboring this as well. So if there's a timer, then it's, you know, it, it, you know it's going to occur. Mm -hmm. so. Would that be a timer or a photoelectric control? It could be either or. Because with timing, yes, you're right. obvious seasonal changes, you, you'll be futzing with it constantly. That's correct. Is there anything in the code about motion? Yes, I, I believe the code also allows motion detectors, but it's not a requirement. It's at your discretion. Okay. I like to see timer. So is that a know. majority of the board that would I like, like to see photo, I like photoelectric. Too. I just why don't, why don't we continue with the conditions and then we okay. can Okay. I've highlighted it just. Okay. Kelly's uh, on a roll here. So. I've got like four pages to go. Uh, consistent with the decision of the ZBA, provide for the maintenance of the landscaping in an amount acceptable to the town engineer and in a form acceptable to the town attorney. 
The applicant shall provide a 10 foot wide, no disturbance, no build buffer along the eastern property line, prohibiting any disturbance of or structures upon the land, including vegetation. Uh, place a restrictive covenant over the 10 foot wide buffer along the eastern property line. This restrictive covenant shall be in favor of the adjacent property owner and shall include ongoing maintenance standards and shall provide that this be a no disturbance, no build area, prohibiting any disturbance, including vegetative clearing, unless expressly noted on the plans. This shall also be noted as such on the plans. The restrictive covenant shall be drafted to the satisfaction of the town attorney as to form, proof of filing the easement, deed restriction, restrictive covenant. Kelly, when you say town attorney, is that you or is that Howard? Generally, it has to be Howard. However, usually when it's something like this, he asks me to review it and give him our thoughts since we've dealt with the project all the way through. He just has to get it then, a lot of these things, through if they need the town to sign anything. And would you mind just summarizing what all of that means? Is there like a one-liner that you would say? Don't touch the 10 feet next to his property. Okay. Forever. Right. It's a restrictive it's a, yep. deed restricting that can never be changed. Right. Kevin, are you okay with that? I mean, I don't, you don't have an objection, I know, but do you understand what that is? No, means? I understand that. We went through that as own board. Okay. Uh, All right, good. Can I promise that we should be included? Um, tree guys. You gotta be fine. That's you a, gotta go well, that's, you gotta find a 50 year old tree and put it back. It's later in the resolution. Proof of filing the restrictive covenant with the Orange County Clerk's Office shall be provided to the building department prior to the issuance of the building permit. The plan shall be revised to include water storage tank construction details to the satisfaction of the town engineer. If the height of the tank exceeds 15 feet, the applicant shall return to the planning board and may be required to obtain additional variances. The applicant shall obtain the building inspector's approval of the proposed aerial fire apparatus access and provide any fire lane striping required. Further, the applicant shall obtain the building inspector's approval of the fire apparatus road, including any increase in the dead end along the easterly side of the building. The applicant shall perform soil testing and design the on-site wastewater disposal system to the satisfaction of the town engineer. The applicant shall submit two copies of all submissions to and responses from all regulatory agencies between the time of this conditional approval and the signing of the plans. The applicant shall comply with all mitigation measures set forth in the negative declaration adopted by the planning board on September 6, 2022, as so each are set forth herein. The applicant shall be required to maintain the minimum stopping site distance through routine vegetation clearing within the site, within the stopping site distance triangles identified on the plan. Um, the applicant shall comply with the decision of the town ZBA dated April 25, 2023, including the following conditions. No work shall be performed by the applicant or its business on the weekend. All parking stalls proposed to be land banked shall be constructed consistent with the comments of the October 6, 2022 report from the Orange County Department.